first we'll have a look at some of the shutter speed controls. On the top of the camera you can see the controls. Here's the shutter release and here is a shutter speed selector. You can also see the film advance lever and this little lever here is the on switch. When you move this switch to the right it reveals a little red dot and this means that the camera is on. Shutter speed selector dial. As you can see we have a shutter speed from 2000th all the way down to 8 seconds over here. As well as these ones we have bulb uh, most people know what this is. T, this one's quite interesting, I'll explain this in a minute. X, as well as automatic. Now, what T does is, when you take a picture, you can press the shutter, and now the shutter will stay open until I move the dial off. So effectively what it does is it locks the shutter open. X is uh, a little bit complicated, I'm not actually sure what this does. I think it's something to do with flash. But then automatic is quite simply just the automatic setting. When the shutter speed is on A, it's uh, locked, so you have to press this little button here to take it off. And the same thing happens with X, not with T or B. Uh, the reason the 60th is in red is because that is a flash sync speed for the Nikon F3. To the left, we can see there reveals a second red dot over here. Now this red dot means that the camera is now in self-timer mode. So, when we release the shutter, the shutter doesn't fire, but instead, a little red light comes on over here. This is the self-timer light. Uh, the self-timer lasts for about 10 seconds, and then when it gets to 2 seconds, it flashes like this. And then after that, the picture is taken. See the depth of field preview button. And what happens when you press this button is, obviously, it previews the depth of field. What the depth of field preview button does is move this little lever down to stop, stop down the lens before you take the picture. You press the depth of field in, and you move this switch, it actually locks up the mirror. But here you can see the mechanical shutter release and pull the little lever out to the ready position and then pull down to release the shutter. About an 80th of a second and there's only one speed that you can use. Button in here and you can um, lock the exposure. This is the right side of the camera. Uh, there's only one button really. A lot of people know what this does. So you can release the lens like this and it can go back on. Sync cord socket which often gets lost. Just put it back on. Move back up to the top. Rewind crank. Uh, it's pretty standard for Nikon cameras. Arm speed selector. Uh, this goes all the way down from uh, 12 ISO to 400 ISO. And the way you just the way you adjust it, just pull up this little ring, and uh, you can adjust it to whatever you like. Exposure compensation uh, dial. What you can do is um, adjust the comp. They compensate for the exposure and it goes all the way from two stops underexposed to two stops overexposed. Push this little push this little button here and then you can turn this this dial. Also the hot shoe for the flash, it uses a special one for the F3. Didn't really want to mount a hot shoe on top of the prism because well I don't know, you should ask Nikon about that. To remove to remove the prism, um, there's Two, there's two catches. There's one on the left, or one on the right. So what you what you do is just uh, pull them both back, pull them both back, and then you can remove the prism. Now there's several different prisms which you can fit onto a Nikon F3. This is the standard prism. There's a high eye point. There's a action finder, and several others. I don't I don't know them all. And what you can also do is remove the prism, uh, remove the focusing screen. So this is how you remove the focusing screen. Just push it forward and then it comes up like this. Right now I have the standard focusing screen, it's the K-Type. There's a whole bunch of other ones you can get. Uh, if you just search the internet you can find out about those. Yeah. Let's we'll switch here and what this does if I pull it out is close the viewfinder. It's so no straight light goes into the prism. And uh, you can see a little window here. Uh, this The purpose of this little window is to let light into so you can see what exposure, what shutter speed you're using. Um, if there's no light, there's a little red dot here. It's actually a button, although it's not a very good one. Uh, when you press this in, a little light comes on inside, but for some, for some reason a lot of people have trouble with this button. It doesn't really work very well. You just move it to the right, and then it'll pop over in the back like this. If you look inside the mirror box, you can see a uh, little glass, I call it the eye, and that's actually the metering system, and uh, it's pretty pretty good on the F3. Lock up the mirror sort of halfway, you can just about see a little mirror 
behind the, the main reflex mirror. And the purpose of this is to reflect light. Uh, some light actually goes right through the middle of the mirror and uh, bounces off this secondary mirror and then into the eye at the bottom of the mirror box. All the features at once. For example, I want to use a mirror lockup, double exposure, self timer, one stop under it. I can do all these things together. We'll move on to the bottom of the camera. There's a few things that are quite important here. There's uh, this thing, this thing, this thing. They're all to do with the motor drive. We'll rewind the film. This is the tripod mount. This is the battery cover. The battery cover, you're gonna have to use a special coin. It can only be a Hong Kong $1 or any other coin or object of a similar shape. These are the batteries. It uses two of these two of these small button cell batteries. Uh, quite common for most cameras to use these batteries. This is the motor drive for the Nikon F3. It, it can only be used on the Nikon F3. It's called the MD4. Standard AA batteries in here, so it adds quite a bit of weight to the camera, but the camera's not exactly light anyway, so that doesn't really make a difference. The bot this bottom cover here. Again, you've got to use your special coin or any other object which with roughly similar shape. Keep the, the bottom cover from the camera so you don't lose it. Just pops into here and then you can easily take it out like this. So I'll keep it in there for now. Tripod screw here and then that mates with the camera. So they just screw on together. Uh, the MD4 has been very well designed to work with the F3. As you can see, it is a, almost a flawless fit and when, when you use together, it, the F3 feels very nice and fits very comfortably in your hands, almost as if uh, it's part of the same camera. 135mm f2.8 Nikon lens. It's not small, it's quite heavy. There's no way this is going to balance. Ta-da! A battery is to power the camera instead of those small button cells. Two LEDs, and there's a button here. When you press the button, and both lights light up, that means everything is good. If only one light right, lights up, that means there's not enough power to operate at full speed. And if no lights light up, then you probably haven't put any batteries in it or the batteries are dead. Film rewind, and to operate this, there's uh, two switches. This one has to be moved to the left, and this one has to be moved up. And then that, that'll rewind your film in a matter of seconds, which is very good. So a good feature, it allows you to specify how many shots the camera should take before it stops you from taking pictures. So for example, so you can see there's two frames, so I can take one uh, one picture, and then it won't let me. This light has come on to tell me I've reached the end of the roll. Keep it on the orange dot, and then that'll keep shooting until the, the ca until the motor drive thinks you're at the end of the roll. So L is obviously for lock. S, uh, single shots. Continuous drive, second mode. Back on the front, there's a few connectors uh, here here and also over here these do uh, something I'm not actually sure what they do you can do a bunch of things I think a flash syncing um, ex external power and fit a vertical a vertical this one's actually so you can fit a vertical shooting grip as, as I said before there's a there's a ton of accessories you can get for the f3